Hello and welcome to our third video for Unit 2 in Calculus. Here we're going to talk about some of our basic rules for differentiation. Last time we spoke, we talked about the formal definition of a derivative, which involved a limit and find, trying to find that instantaneous rate of change. Um, it was a long process, so today I'm going to show you some of those shortcuts. These are the four that we're going to be talking about, our constant rule, our power rule, the constant multiple, and the sum and difference rule. Now. I hope you recognize these four terms as we continue on because I will use these four terms throughout class all the time. We're going to start with our constant function. So consider the function f of x equals 4. Well, in order to really think about that, maybe we need a visual representation. So we're going to go ahead and sketch this graph. And what does that look like? It looks like a horizontal line at y equals 4. But what is the slope at this point? And if you think about it, you know, slope is delta y over delta x, change in, uh, change in y over change in x. And look at our constant line. At no point is there going to be that change in y. That means you have 0 divided by your changes in x. That means your slope will always be 0. This is true about your derivative because, again, remember, my derivative is my slope. And that's a very important phrase to remember because I'm going to make you call it out to me in class a million times over from here till the AP exam. So if my derivative is my slope, then the derivative of 4 has to be 0. And here is that visual representation. But this happens with any constant. If you have a constant by itself, now we'll talk about when a constant is attached to something else, but if you have a constant by itself, your derivative must always be 0. And we're going to move on to our power rule. Now, up here I have the definition, that formal view of it, and this simply says ddx, which means my derivative, of some x to the nth, or some power, is equal to n times x to the n minus 1, which in essence means I take the degree, I take the exponent, I take the power, I rip it to the front, I make it a coefficient, and then I take that exponent and I subtract 1. So I'm going to knock it down a peg. That means our, you know, an x to the fourth has to become x cubed. That cubic function has to become quadratic. That quadratic function has to become linear. And finally, a linear becomes constant because then we're zeroed out and we're done. So I have three examples here. I'm going to walk through them real quick. So how does this look? Again, here is my n value. That's 3. So I'm going to bring it to the front and it becomes 3 minus 1. So that simply becomes 3x squared. And that's it. Now our second example down here is a little different because as of right now, it doesn't quite look like a uh, power function. But if you recall from Algebra 2 or from Algebra um, concepts, our exponential properties actually tells me that all radicals are exponents. So I can rewrite that as x to the one-third. If you're struggling with that, please come see me. That is an old property and you should know this by now. So I'm going to take that uh, for its derivative and that's going to become my exponent brings to the front, and I'm going to subtract 1, which we know is actually the form of 3 over 3 since we have a fraction. So this becomes 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. And I could simplify that. Of course, I could bring that negative down on bottom, um, or the negative exponent. It's based down on bottom. Here again, it looks like a power, but it's in the denominator, and our rule clearly shows us in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my exponent properties to bring it up top. So that's actually x to the negative 2. So when I apply the derivative, that becomes negative 2 times x, and that's negative 2 minus 1. So if I simplify that down, that's negative 2 x to the negative 3. Again, I can bring this entire higher piece to the denominator because that's our property of ex, uh, negative exponents. And finally, we have just the derivative of x. And why do I have it highlighted here? Because this is a derivative you use often enough that you should recognize it. So the derivative of x is just going to be 1. But if you need that proof, I'm going to show it to you. x can also be written as x to the first power. So if I take that derivative, that becomes 1 times x to the 1 minus 1. So if I simplify that, that's simply x to the 0th power. And anything to the zeroth power has to equal one. So there's our proof that that example is true. Before we move on and I verify our answers, I want to recall some notation. dy dx is the same as saying y prime. So I'm showing you all the different ways we can write the derivative. d dx, dy dx, y prime, f prime. There's so many different ways. So here's proof of our answers. 
And we've got our second rule, the constant multiple. And in the constant multiple, all this is, this simply tells me that if I have that constant, again, if the constant's by itself, my derivative is zero. But if I have that constant and it is attached to something, I can simply take that constant and pull it outside. So we have this first example. And basically what this is telling me is I can say it's simply five times x to the fourth, and I can apply this derivative. So that becomes five times the derivative. So bring that four down, x to the four minus one, and that becomes 20x cubed. And that's all it means. So here again, I can bring that four fifths out. That's really t squared. So that becomes four fifths times my power rule, which simplifies down to eight fifths t. Down here again, and again, I have my x on bottom, so I'm going to rip it up to the top, so that's actually 2x to the negative 1. So I'm going to keep that constant on the outside, do my power rule, and then I simplify, and that becomes negative 2x to the negative 2. And again, here we're going to rewrite this as a power, so that's actually 2x to the 1 half, and so I apply my derivative. I bring that two to the outside and I start my power rule, minus, minus two over two, which simplifies down to, these are gonna cancel out, so that simplifies to x to the negative one half, which is the same as seeing it as one over x to the one half, which is the same as saying one over x, square root of x, okay? And our final uh, rule will be the sum and difference rule. But before we talk about that, here's that other notation I was telling you about. We saw dy dx was equal to y prime. And if y prime is equal to f prime, then dy dx has to also be equal to f prime. Here's proof of our answers. One more. Cool of means. And finally, we have our sum and difference rule, our sum and difference property, actually. And this simply tells me if I have multiple terms in a uh, equation, sentence, polynomial, whatever you want to talk about in your function, if you have multiple terms, you can literally split each term up, okay? This is a lot different than what we're going to progress to. When you are when you have multiplication, that's different. This is sum and difference. And what does that mean? When you're adding and subtracting those different terms. So we're that's what we're going to be doing here. So basically, I can look at this term by itself, this term by itself, this term by itself. That's all this tells you, which is kind of a common sense property. But the big thing on this slide that I want you to notice is that we're no longer finding simply uh, y prime. We're now finding what we call y double prime or the second derivative. This is one more way we can notate that second derivative. And of course, you could do third, fifth, 200th, 1,000th, you know, you can do any kind of derivative with this notation. So let's go ahead and do our derivative right here. So the, the original derivative, y prime, should be equal to 3x squared minus 4, and then technically plus 0. Then I would do my second derivative, and I would do the derivative of the first derivative. So that becomes 6x minus 0, but I'm just going to leave it as 6x. Down here, we have our second example, and we have uh, y prime would be equal to uh, 6 times 1 half, so 3x to the fifth minus 6x and then plus 1. So then its derivative, or the second derivative, becomes 15x minus 6, and technically plus 0. But we're going to go ahead and just leave that as it is. And our final example, the third example on this page, tells me we have... Uh, 4 times negative 1 half, so negative 2x to the third plus 3, and then, of course, plus 0. So the derivative of that becomes negative 6x. And, of course, I'm going to show you proof of that, give our answers uh, right on in there, 6x, 15x to the fourth minus 6, and negative 6x squared. Okie dokie. So I've got a few examples to go through. We're also going to be talking about that trigonometric function. Uh, trigonometric function properties as well. And you know what, for sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and skip these examples. So if you want to pause and go back and look through those, absolutely please do. But here is our, our second note card for the day. So you have to memorize these as well. And these aren't rules. These are simply telling you what the derivative is. You have to have these six memorized. Um, they will absolutely be on the next memorization quiz. So just applying that real quick, here I have a constant multiple and the trigonometric derivative. So when I put that in, that becomes y prime would be equal to 2 
times the derivative of sine x, which is positive cosine x. So if I simplify that down, that becomes 2 cosine x. For this second example, we can rewrite that as 1 half sine x. So that means its derivative.